Spider-Woman movie rumored to want Tomb Raider star Alicia Vikander to take on the role of Jessica Drew. Ita Pokuin of the place to be reviews right here with all of yous. Sony is continuing to expand the scope of its Spider-Man spin-off universe as the studio is said to be planning a live-action Spider-Woman movie. What's more, we have word on who they're eyeing as the possible star and who they want in the director's chair. It looks like Sony has set its bar pretty high as they're possibly looking at Oscar award-winning actress Alicia Vikander to take on the lead role, which acclaimed Game of Thrones director Michelle McLaren eyed to direct the Marvel Comics adaptation. Before proceeding, we must caution that, for the time being, this can be considered nothing more than a rumor until we get further confirmation. That said, multiple recent reports have stated that a Spider-Woman movie is in the works. We previously heard that Sony was working on an animated movie cut from the same cloth as Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse that will center on the character. However, the indication is here that the project is going to be a live action along the same lines as Venom. As for the possible casting of Alicia Vikander, she seems poised to take on a major comic book role at some point or another. Vikander's already proved she can lead a franchise with Tomb Raider, which hit theaters in 2018, and has a sequel on the way. Vikander also took home the Academy Award in 2016 for Best Supporting Actress category for her performance in The Danish Girl. It's easy to see why Sony would look to her for the part. Michelle McLaren, meanwhile, has been on Hollywood's radar to direct a big feature for some time. While McLaren hasn't yet helmed a movie... She's directed episodes of shows like Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad, and The Walking Dead. McLaren is also attached to direct Cowboy Ninja Viking with Chris Pratt set to star. For those who may not be familiar, Jessica Drew, the first woman to take up the mantle of Spider-Woman in the world of Marvel Comics, made her debut in 1977's Marvel Spotlight number 32. Jessica Drew got uranium poisoning as a child, and in a desperate attempt to cure her, she was injected with a serum made from the spider blood and was put into a genetic accelerator. Jessica emerged from the machine decades later and found she had powers very similar to Spider-Man. Following the success of Venom, Sony quickly got to work on Morbius, which hits theaters in July, as well as Venom 2, which is currently filming. Morbius, it seems, is going to connect the MCU in some way, shape, or form, which could open the door for future characters from the Sony side to cross over. We recently learned that the studio has dated a mystery Marvel movie for October 2021. Could that be Spider-Woman? Time will tell. We'll be sure to keep you posted on any further details that are made available. So we jetted over to the Illuminati here from this article from yesterday. It's I wanted to cover this paragraph right here. It says, why it's a big deal Spider-Woman is coming to the big screen. Three major recent elements of the character could give her more connections to the rest of the MCU. Even though she's starting on the Sony side of it, Jessica has long established been a best friend to Captain Marvel, which could easily allow her to film a supporting role in any future Captain Marvel films. She's also a spider hero of the multiverse, which occasionally draws her into reluctant leadership role during the Spider-Verse event. This could even set up a Spider-Women team-up, which saw Jessica Drew, Gwen, Gwen Stacy, and Cindy Moon, a.k.a. the still unintroduced Silk. Now, the Cindy Moon character was introduced in one of the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, albeit briefly as an ancillary character... How could Jessica Drew arrive on the big screen? The Illuminati has seen the early ideas of what Sony and Marvel want from the character. It's been hinted at that she would fill a similar role to Spider-Man, bridging their Marvel films like Venom and Morbius into the greater MCU. The log line for the film hints at the general arc of the story and actually seem to reflect a lot of classic elements of the character. So what do I think of all this? <laughs> the boxing match, she got in there and smashed it up. <laughs> Bruised her shins, took one on the nose, the chin. I think the first scene. So what do I think of Alicia Vikander? I believe that this is the woman for the job. Now, I posted this in a group, and I have been getting some kind of funny comments on there, and it's mostly the guys who are questioning whether she's actually a woman or not that really amuse me. It's like, if you had a quarter of the dedication that she had, maybe you wouldn't be complaining that her tits aren't big enough probably because you're looking down at yours and they bounce every time you hit a speed bump. And I mean, I'm not body shaming here, but don't don't say that a beautiful female who's talented and dedicated to her craft 
and does a lot of her own stunts and learned how to do them, unlike Brie Larson, who claimed, I did all my own stunts, thank you very much. I did, I did my stunts because I thought that that's what everyone did. Uh, thank oh. you very much. And, and claimed that her workout regimen was so hardcore when she didn't even have any definition whatsoever. I'm sorry, she couldn't even do a, a, a correct pull-up. This woman is doing her own fight scenes, her own wire work, uh, and looks proficient. That boxing sequence I showed right there, hands down, right there, that is an action star. This woman looked better than, and I love Gal Gadot. I love Gal Gadot. But this woman's body and, and, and physical presence is far superior than even her. This is an action star right here, okay? Uh, to me, that's my opinion. But I'm sorry, don't, don't. Don't get mad because she doesn't have big porn star tits. I'm sorry, man. Like, it, it, guys, you kind of make it easy for the feminists to uh, to call you out on your bullshit sometimes. It's like, we say we love strong female actresses and, you know, characters. And then you get one that looks strong, is strong. And then you're going to insult her because she doesn't look exactly like you want. I mean, come on, man. You keep that shit up and you're going to have nothing but Brie Larson's. I mean, seriously. You're going to have nothing but a bunch of Karens that can't do their own stunts have Two different stunt women and a stunt ass. woman does it, you know, I'm sure I'm sure she had a stunt woman for some of the really, really difficult stuff because that's what they're paid for. That's what they're trained for. But at the same time, look at what she did do. I mean, how many of you could get off your lazy asses off your couch and do that? Probably not many. Uh, I can say that because even in the shape that I'm in now, I can still do a standing uh, front flip and I could get into a wrestling ring, probably be blown up in about a minute, but but I can still walk through a, a, a match and make it look good and sell it if, if I got to pace it. So no, man, don't, uh, don't sit there and say this woman looks like a man just because you're salty because she's got better tone and definition than you do. So I, I'm I'm all for this. Now I'm not saying that this movie won't be woke or anything. I'm just looking at the actress alone and saying this is an action star. All right. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. So yeah, there's a shot of her from Tomb Raider, and there's a shot of her on a boat with a uh, husband Michael Fassbender, and that is a lot of hard work and dedication that paid off right there into a very athletic presentation in her physique, which I applaud. So there you have it. Spider-Woman rumors, could that October 2021 date be the Spider-Woman movie? Join the Place to Be Reviews to keep up on all the news and views we talk about here on the channel. And also, you can join the Fandom Menace as well by becoming part of the channel. Hail the Fandom Menace. Here's where you can find us all across social media, at TV2BR on Instagram. The Place to Be Reviews page on Facebook. The official Place to Be Reviews fan page. That's our private group on Facebook. At The Place to Be RE1. At N80P on Twitter. Past podcast available. Anchor, iTunes, and Spotify. Coming soon to blogtalkradio.com. That is correct, my friends. With that being said, I'm Etepo Queen. The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of you. And if I don't see you, have a great day. A pleasant tomorrow. Stay tuned. Because another video, well, that's coming up next.